Hi, my name is Conical Clarnas and you're watching the video Field of Uniocular Fixation. In this video, we'll be discussing how to assess ductions by plotting the field of uniocular fixation. Field of uniocular fixation, in essence, maps the restricted field of monocular movement. So when we have a patient with a limitation of the extraocular muscles, we can actually map the ductions to provide a record of the restricted movement over time. So as an example, if we had a patient with a left AB duction deficit, we can actually map the range of movement that that eye has and map that over time. Now, generally the field of uniocular fixation is utilized when patients have gross or large restrictions and where the, where the limitation is mechanical in nature. The field of uniocular fixation is actually not commonly used in clinic, and this is because there are other methods of mapping eye movements, and in particular, the HESS chart is the most common investigation utilized to map eye movements and to monitor eye movements over time. However, the HESS chart has its own limitations, and an example of this is patients with suppression are unable to be assessed on the HESS chart. So in these instances, uh, if you want to map or create a record of the ductions, then the field of uniocular fixation is a good alternative. There are two methods to um, mapping the field of uniocular fixation. You can use a perimeter or the synoptophore. And we'll be in this particular video simply discussing the utilization of the Goldman perimeter in mapping the field of uniocular fixation. So let's commence with the Goldman. Uh, you'll obviously have to occlude one eye to begin with as you're looking at the uniocular field of fixation. And you will set up the patient as per usual and use a target such as the 24E. Now you'll ask the patient to follow the light and you will observe the patient following that light. You will also ask the patient to identify the first point in time that they notice that the light becomes blurry. This is an indication that the patient has lost foveal, foveal fixation and therefore is an indication of where the limitation um, is and where they have stopped being able to follow the light. Now you can measure um, through all meridians and it's suggested that you don't move through uh, at intervals greater than 45 degrees. In terms of mapping the field of uniocular fixation, you would use a visual field recording sheet as you would normally on the Goldman. And here we have uh, an example of a recording sheet with the uniocular fixation or normal uniocular field of monocular fixation mapped here. And so here we have the field of the right eye and here the field of the left eye. Using this as an example of a recording, here we have a patient who has had their field of uniocular fixation mapped and the white areas here uh, indicate areas of where there was eye movement and the shade area are areas where the eyes were unable to move within. So we can see here that we have normal adduction. The patient is able to elevate and depress their left eye. However, they are only just able to cross the midline and move only fractionally into abduction. And this line here is documenting the amount of abduction the patient can achieve. And what we can see also is that um, even in elevation, there is no real increase in the amount of abduction that the patient can achieve, nor when they're looking in down gaze down here, can they achieve more abduction. If we look more closely in terms of the degrees, what we'll note here is that there's approximately um, only 12 degrees of abduction that the patient can achieve. So you can see here that if you map this on a regular basis, what you will be able to see is how the ductions will hopefully improve in time. Okay, as noted earlier, you can also utilize, utilize the synoptophore in assessing the field of uniocular fixation. In this instance, you would put a slide in front of the eye that you were assessing and instruct the patient to look at the target and to follow the target. 
you would generally commence at zero and move the target into the position where the limitation is known to be present. You could observe the eye, um, and in this instance, it's easier to observe the eye than it is with the perimeter, and the patient can tell you when the image becomes blurry. Remember to record in this instance in degrees. You've got two options when using the synoptophore to measure in prism diopters or degrees, and for field of view ocular fixation, you should always measure, oh, sorry, you should always record using degrees. Here we see an example of a synoptophore recording where field of uniocular fixation has been performed. And what we can see here is the orthoptist has only selected to map the limitation in left gaze because this is where the limitation exists. There's no need to look at all positions of gaze. So in summary, you can use the perimeter or the synoptophore to map the field of uniocular fixation. And whilst it's not used commonly in the clinic, it can be useful when you can't use alternative methods of mapping eye movements, and it can be useful in monitoring the progress of a patient's ductions over time. Again, if we go back to Miss Jones, you will note that there is no recording of the field of uniocular fixation. So we don't have a recording to look at in relation to this. Okay, that brings us to the conclusion of this video. Thank you for watching.